for so long. We've been here. We've been trying to break. Hello and welcome to the Springboard Hangout. The Springboard Hangout is your, is your lovely Thursday evening program. That's we we work or we, we, we have a conversation with people in industry, people who are making it, and we find, we, we find ways of enjoying ourselves, but finding out critical answers to questions that we do have. This week, we're starting a new series. You know, last week we ended our six-part series, our five-part series with the Executive Women's Network, and we looked at women on the go. We're starting Entrepreneurship 101. It's about the cash, it's about the networks, it's about um, innovation, it's about how we can create Ghanaian-led businesses here in our beloved GH. And therefore, if you join us today, I want to say so you are so welcome. Because, hey, tell your friend who is thinking about starting a business, all that friend of yours who is in work and keeps on saying that, I think I want to be an entrepreneur. And let the person come on board to learn how he or she can have that dream job or that dream business that he is, he, they've been thinking about all these years. My name is Comfort Okran. Today, I've been privileged to be joined by Franklin. Franklin Owusu, um, Franklin Owusu, Kakari is uh, the Director of Business Development at the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, which we all know as NEIP. We know they've been cooking things in their pot. We don't know what is inside that pot today. We are going to break down that pot, but we won't break it down so that they can't cook again because we, they need to continue cooking. But we want to find out what is in the pot and see what kind of soup or what kind of, what, what is inside it. So we're starting our Entrepreneurship 101 series. Be with us because it promises to be a very, very rewarding experience, both physically, mentally, and most importantly, um, you feeling you have achieved something. We're going on a break. When we return, we'll start our conversation. Call a friend. Let the person join us. And you that you're watching us right now, kindly tell us, where are you joining us from? And do you have any question for Franklin about entrepreneurship? Write those questions down. And we'll be doing quizzes along the line. So be prepared and take full part in today's Springboard Hangout. you most welcome. I don't look like what I have been through. Turn my pit into a well So the essence of my praise Is centered on your grace Adum, Adum, Wadum I've been through a lot But grace sustained me My test is now a testimony So the essence of my Centered on your grace, a jump, a jump, what jump? It was you, my lawyer in that courtroom. It was you, my soldier on that battlefield. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace, a jump, a jump.
Hi everyone, my name is Diana Hamilton. Come this Sunday, I get to sit and chat with the wonderful Reverend Albert Okran on the Springboard Virtual University. Let's see what he gets to get out of me. I'm excited about this. Make a date and join us. Get me your also into car. I need a car in 15 minutes. Hi, I'm Jake, Jake Morris, and I travel globally. But when I'm in Ghana, York's Rent-A-Car is my reliable choice for safety and comfort on the road. York's Rent-A-Car provides comprehensive logistic services to mainly blue-chip companies as well as individual clients. At a time, we needed a car rental service, and York's fitted in very well per our standards. Their services is top-notch. Drivers are on time. It was beautiful to see them behind the wheels. And any time they pick up a guest, the guests were very, very happy. Already? Excellent. York's Rent-A-Car provides services and expertise that include meet and greet services at the airport, car rental, driver personal outsourcing, and vehicle detailing. Co what, what's the problem? It's you. I told you. York's Rent-A-Car delivers world-class service to its customers, having their highest safety and comfort in mind. So watch out. Go over to open for him. York's Rent-A-Car runs 24-7 operations where customers can make car reservations and inquiries of our services online and also call our hotline. Welcome back Ed, to the Springboard Hangout. And I said, we are starting series on entrepreneurship. We're starting with Franklin, and I can assure you, we've come to the right person because this is someone who is an entrepreneur, works with entrepreneurs, and is working with the policies that will help entrepreneurship bloom in this country. We have a TEEP T1000 Pan-African entrepreneur, business coach, speaker, and certified entrepreneurship deployment trainer. <laughs> Currently, the director of business development, as I said, as NEIP, and he works with EFC Consult and ACE Ghana. If you want somebody who can do it for us, this is Franklin Owusu Kari Kari. Franklin, what is TEEP? Well, TIP is uh, the Tony Elumelu Entrepreneurship Program. Okay. Yes, and um, it's uh, owned and run by the millionaire Tony Elumelu in Nigeria. So in 2015, mm -hmm. he started a program. His vision is to uh, fund 10,000 young Africans okay. for the next 10 years. Okay. So that will end. He started uh, 2015, 15. so by 2025, uh, yes. Uh, he will be supporting uh, 10,000 Africans with uh, $10,000. Okay. So 2015, about 45,000 of us across all the 52 countries in Africa applied, and we went through rigorous selection, and uh, I was selected with my business as a, a juice processor. A juice processor? Yes, I wow. make juices, uh, even from tomatoes, uh, from cucumber, from carrots. No, no, please tell us the sweet ones. I, I, I don't like. I so mean, I then like. We go to the, the pineapple, the hey, mango, yes. the melons. Thank you, thank you, and thank the you. orange juices. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. so, and when they saw what we do, and our focus was to end post harvest losses that were happening in our country, and that put us on the African map in 2015. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So then um, you started your, but you started the business before the 2015 award. Yes, yes. So how long were you with Tommy and um, the, the foundation? How did the, how, how did it work with the, the, the TEEP uh, program? Yeah, so in, in uh, 2015 January, I was going through my phone and I saw the ad that this millionaire is creating. And I said, look, this is a big opportunity for me to give it a try. And many, people, many young people see a lot of opportunities, but they gloss over. Hmm. So I said, no, let me give it to you. Because at that time, I was struggling uh, to build my businesses. And you know, processing of juices is quite capital intensive if okay. you want the right machinery. Okay. So uh, we had already started other businesses that, that we are doing. And what we'll be sharing with the entrepreneurs, sometimes if you have multiple ideas, mm -hmm. begin with the one that will call, require least effort okay. and can bring in some revenue. 
then you use the revenue to be able to build up on the one that requires uh, some level of capitalization okay. or funding. So that's how we got into the program. And it was one year application going through all the uh, rigorous activities. And voila, we saw that we've been selected among the 1,000 Pan-African entrepreneurs under the T program. Congratulations. Thank you. Was it just, a, let's say, a, a one weekend program? How long was the program? Well, after the selection, we had to go through 12 weeks of intensive training. Okay. And that was very rigorous. You know, they dissected our businesses, and I got a mentor from Zimbabwe. Okay. So my mentor was all the way from the so through email, and that time WhatsApp was not so common, but through email and Skype where he was directing us and building me up and directing me as to how I should build. But then we went through the various rigorous process of building our business. We sent report to the Tony Elumelu office. We work on our financials, our brands, our marketing, and everything. Mm. And finally, after the 12 weeks, when we have completed the program, mm -hmm. uh, we were flown to Nigeria for okay. about four days. And we had the opportunity to meet Tony himself. And uh, we were given our certificates and our cash. And this money came through, you know, he's the ch chairman of UBA, yeah. the United Bank of Africa. And it, when we came back to Ghana, within a week, our money was in our account for us to start working with it. Fantastic, fantastic. So then you are an entrepreneur yourself. Yeah. But you're also a director at um, NEIP. Yes. What does NEIP do? Okay, NEIP is a flagship policy initiative of the government of Ghana. Uh, it was previously known as the Youth Enterprise Support. Okay, yes. Okay. And when this um, current government came, he said, no, I want to make entrepreneurship as a priority to my government. Because the president saw that the youth unemployment rate was alarming. And it wasn't just an economic crisis, but a security threat. So he said, look, let me transform this years into an engine of job creation. So the YES program was turned as the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. So that Government got three pillars, innovation, integration, and also entrepreneurship. And so, look, these are the driving word for you to go with. And this is the agency I'm setting up to be able to do as a special purpose vehicle for job creation. So, and NEP has been mandated to be able to support early stage business. Even if the business is in your mind, any IP supports. So, we don't only support existing businesses that, so, uh, that have all structures, no. Even if your business is not registered, it's in the mind. We help you to bring that from the mind onto a paper, guide you to be able to do the uh, prototype, the market testing, and be able to get it running. That is our core mandate. So after training you and support, we give training, incubate, accelerate, fund it, and also guide them through marketing. Okay, so I know most of us, I mean, when we think, when we, most of us had only the funding. Yeah. So, but, but I think we need to look at the incubation, we need to yeah. look at the prototype, we also yeah. need to look at the, um, just even growing the idea. Yeah. So let me start, let me say, okay, so those of us watching, how many of us want to be entrepreneurs? Just, just let us know by raising your hand or sending a, you know, on, 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 on the platform. So that's number one. Yeah. But number two, who qualifies? to be an entrepreneur? I think that's a very fundamental question yeah. that I want us to drill down for today's session. Yeah. Who qualifies to be an entrepreneur? Great question. For me, I don't believe in the idea that uh, cool. uh, entrepreneurs are born. Okay. Okay. Everyone qualifies to be an entrepreneur, but you must be able to develop certain key qualities, certain form of resilience, you must be able to develop it. So for me, everyone, whether you are a student, whether you are an older person, whether you are young, whether you are uh, a full-time worker, you can become an entrepreneur. And that is something that we need to become. So entrepreneurship is not restricted to certain people born from certain region. It's a quote for the more business. No, yeah, yeah. entrepreneurship is open to everyone who is ready to go through that long haul of sacrifice. That long haul of sacrifice? Yeah. All right. So, I mean, we, we don't like sacrificing <laughs> too much. But you, because you said it, I want us to drill it down and go one by one. Yeah. Okay. So, what, anyway, let me find out. Are there certain qualities of entrepreneurs? What, what kind of qualities? What, what, what will make me say, okay, me, for instance, I want to become an entrepreneur? Um, are there any qualities that we should have 
at the back of our minds. Yes. You know, most people erroneously have certain impressions. Oh, I want to go to entrepreneurship. I want to become an entrepreneur so that I can be my own boss. Uh, yes, it's one of them, but it's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say it's a myth? Because... Well, you know, that is not all it takes. Really? Yes, that you, are, take? you are just your own boss. Because uh, critically, mm -hmm. when you become an entrepreneur, you become the servant, the slave of the company. Oh. Okay, tell me something that I like. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 has, it has some form of fulfillment. Okay. okay? So okay. there is the hard work component of it. Okay. There is the, the failure component of it there is the risk component of it there is the um you know the art of creativity you're able to bring out what you want to be able to the satisfaction that comes with you producing a service or a product delivering mm -hmm. you know it, it brings some level of satisfaction you can go to bed and say ah so people are enjoying my product people are enjoying my services i'm making an impact that is a joy and the fulfillment that, but the monetary aspect is also rewarding. Okay. So these okay. are some of the things. Okay. But we need to brace ourselves. But the, for the qualities, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are ambitious. They're ambitious. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to be ambitious. What qualifies to be an um, ambitious? So for instance, if my ambition is, for instance, to walk to, um, let's say, um, Burkina Faso. Yeah. That's an ambition. Yes. But does that qualify me to be an um, entrepreneur? Okay, so... Uh, we have to ask, what is the end in mind of walking to Burkina? Probably the person is walking on the way, soliciting for and selling certain kind of product or service whilst walking from here to Burkina. So every form of ambition must come with an objective. Okay. So first, as an entrepreneur, you must have an objective. You must have an objective. What should that... Ob should, does that objective... Ha ha um, does that objective need to be a one, a financial one, or can it be just a social good one? Or what kind of what kind of objective should it so be? So it can be three ways. Okay. One, it can be to uh, uh, to satisfy some social need. Social need. Yes. To, to satisfy a social need. Yes. Okay. Then some to also because you have gone through an experience mm -hmm. and you found a solution. Okay. You want people to benefit from that solution you had. Then the third one, the monetary value. Okay. 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 So with okay. the finance objective in mind, okay. there are people who have developed certain products or services because. Uh, they had a skin problem mm -hmm. and they try some filter and it's worked for their skin and they've seen other people in that same category and said let me see how best i can help others also have this kind of solution okay yeah okay. so these are some of the uh, objectives but all these objectives are anchored on ideas so they must be anchored on an idea, idea. yeah Okay, so then, um, so we've looked at the one of the qualities is that you must have an objective, or you must have a, a you must have um, a, the objective of meeting either a social need or yeah. having a financial outcome or um, social for social yeah. good or something. Yeah. Now, what other qualities? So uh, entrepreneurs are mm. passionate. They are about, passionate. Yes, you must be passionate about whatever you want to do, mm. and you must be open-minded. You must be, uh, you know, as a self-starter, discipline. Um, discipline, no. It's what kind, how, how disciplined so do you do? You, the, yes. the discipline is here, and we get a contract. Uh, our juice company, for instance, we, 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 our key competitor is actually Blue Skies. Seriously, are you, yeah. are you, are you the higher in the market? Uh, we, we, we've not gotten to their level yet. Okay. Like, they are the competitors we look up to. Okay, okay. Yeah, the bigger competitor we okay. look up to. Okay. Now, so it means that we produce fresh juices, not carbonated. So you get, uh, you get an order mm -hmm. uh, Saturday evening that, look, uh, Sunday by 12, day, uh, in the, uh, we are having a wedding. We need 500 bottles of fresh juice. Sometimes yeah. we stay up together with my wife from 9 to 3 a.m., mm. producing the juice, getting it into the refrigeration, into the cold room, so that early morning we can deliver to our clients. Mm. A cause for some level of discipline mm. uh, even when it comes to time management when it comes to your finance when it comes to your time itself mm. of managing your workspace so that is why uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur yeah. you should be disciplined okay. if you're not disciplined enough you'll not be able to stand the test of time so discipline is important is it, what other quality should do Somebody yes who uh, wants you to must be creative okay you must be determined you must be creative yes. when you say creative what what kind of 
do you have to be like Diana Hamilton that we saw her beautiful video yeah. that she really sang well, that kind of creativity? Or is it the kind of creativity where you design? What, what kind of creativity are so you talking about? So the creativity about? we are looking at is diverse. It comes from uh, how you are able to go to translate whatever idea you have mm -hmm. to be able to meet competition in the marketplace. Diana recently, just some few days ago, won the VGMA award. Mm -hmm. That is, and she did it with her level of creativity okay. to be able to beat the competition. Okay. So it's in the arts, it's in the concept, it's in the thoughts, it's in the ideas. Mm -hmm. So all these faces come to some level of creativity. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm going to be able to bring out uh, this cup yeah. uh, and to sell uh, Milo to people in this cup, mm -hmm. by the time I will get it out there, I have to be creative enough that this cup can be handled without it, uh, Milo pouring. Okay. There should be some level of creativity towards it. So, whatever ideas you have, people are innovating on different things. And that you bring your creativity to bear to innovate on various kinds of ideas, which are, some of them may even be existing already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, you, we've talked about four qualities, I think, so far, um, if I'm right. So, what other three qualities are we looking at? Okay, so we look at um, opportunity seeking and initiative. Opportunity seeking and initiative, yes. uh, taking initiatives. What's the difference between the two? I mean, I think, I think they are two separate qualities. Okay. So I wonder why you combine them. Is it there are people, they see opportunities, mm -hmm. but procrastinate, they never take the initiative. Okay. So they have sought the opportunity. Yeah. Yes, I've seen it. Okay. Oh, this is nice. I, I really want to go into it. Okay. Yes. But the opportunity is with them. Mm -hmm. They don't take the initiative to drive it. Okay. And that has kept many people on the bench. They have great they have sought great opportunity, but the initiative to drive it, mm -hmm. they keep lingering on. Oh, let me wait until I better it well. Let me wait until I do it well. So <laughs> they, 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 are, they are not seeking and driving it. Okay. And you have to be persistent. Okay. So then we, 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 we have to look at the opportunity and we have to take the initiative. Initiative, yes. You will okay. seek the opportunity, but when you seek the opportunity, don't end there. Okay. Take the initiative. Take the initiative. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Right. And then from there you let... Persistence. Persistence. Why do I need to be persistent? It's um, one of the driving forces in the entrepreneurship world. Okay. Sometimes a lot of people would shut the door on your face mm -hmm. if you want to be an entrepreneur. But if you are the one that they shut one door, you go crying, I'm this thing, I can't do it again. <laughs> you, you will survive. <laughs> one place you can hit there seven times. Probably at the sixth hour or the seventh hour, that's when the door will be open. So entrepreneurs need to persist. I remember I went there to sell my juice to some bankers. Mm -hmm. I go there, the, uh, the uh, customer service lady, it's not time for lunch time. Why are you bringing the juice in this place? They, they suck me out. You know, uh, I'm a degree holder, but uh, I'm wearing my jeans trying to market my juice. But I persisted. And said, you are driving me nuts. This lady <laughs> said, look. Pass the back and go to the kitchen and wait. Long time will come there. And that became my selling point. They came, they tasted the juice. They said, wow, where have you been all this? I said, this lady has been driving me away for the last <laughs> couple you of months. You call them gatekeepers. Yes. And I got the market. You need to be persistent in the okay. marketplace. And you know, it reminds me of um, the Huffington Post. That lady was turned away by 46 publishers. With yeah. different, I mean, 46. Can you imagine... Take, taking your work and every time they tell you that, no, we don't want your yeah. work, 46 times. The same with um, the, this gentleman who wrote this book, um, The Four Hour Week, um, Tim Ferriss. Yeah. He was turned down 25 times with that, that particular book. And now is a number one New York bestseller. So, um, dear entrepreneur yeah. or entrepreneur to be, if somebody has been turning you down and you believe in your idea and you know the market has a need for it, do not despair. Don't give up. Because people, when you persist, finally, a way will be created for you. And because you have had the, the, the turn down so many times, 
you will zoom through that opening and people will, where has this person been now yeah. all this time? Yeah. All this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, you know, Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, Morgan Freeman, yeah. He started being an, I mean, he was, he got his first break when he was 52. Yeah. Okay, so this one, let me, since I got 52, <laughs> let me ask you. So those of us who, oh, no, I'm, you know I'm young, right? I, you believe me that I'm young. Yeah, 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 I know. Last week was my birthday, but we won't mention the age. So, so. Is entrepreneurship for only those who are in school, people young, like um, the 18 to 35, who are usually our audience, but yeah. then well, somebody who has been in the corporate world for, let's say, about 10 years, not 100 years, let's say about 15, 20 years, or getting into the 50s. Can the person also venture at being a, um, an entrepreneur? Yeah, you know, when we came at any IP, when we're setting the parameters, mm -hmm. and uh, we said, look, Make sure that you have program for people who are 70 years plus. Oh, wow. And we said, yes, because we realized that there are people who have worked over their lives mm -hmm. as public servants, civil servants, okay. uh, and corporate directors of private companies. Now, they go on retirement. They have so much ideas. Yeah. They want to do something. They come and say, oh, it's for those from 18 to 35. You, you, you get this mention, and I've met a number of them in my office. Okay. And the man said, young man. I'm not that old, though. Yeah. I just came on retirement. <laughs> look, I can I have idea. And you look at the idea. I said, this is mind blowing. Yeah. And we will, so we have to open the doors. Okay. So entrepreneurship is not just for the young people. It can be 80 years. You know, kind of Sanders. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, KFC. Yeah. Until he was, when 60s. he was 60. Yeah. In his 60s. That's when they break. Now, KFC is all over the globe. Okay, so that means that our NEIP is not looking at only the young. No, we have NEIP room. is open to even those who have retired. Yes. And they have fantastic business ideas. Perfect. And you go through the program. Yeah. How long is the NEIP program? So the, uh, our program uh, goes varies. through. It varies. We okay. have some within a month. You, you've gone through the training and you are funded. Okay. Some three months. Okay. And especially with the young people who are coming and a bit naive and they are now beginning, we, they go through the incubation process. So that's between three to six months. So we have those programs. Okay. But for the older people experience, we go through with them, they show them the, uh, the, whole, the few things that they need to do. Sometimes within a month, they are They're ready, ready to, to go. To run. Yeah, they are okay. ready to run. Okay, okay. So then we've, we've looked at six qualities and we come to some of the qualities, additional qualities. You, had, you just mentioned persistence. Yes. Why persistence? Oh, we've, we've finished with persistence yeah, so already. Yes, so commitment. Commitment, okay. Commitment is key. Okay. You know, if you're not committed to whatever you are doing, mm -hmm. you put money into ventures okay. and your money will go down the drain. Okay. You need to be committed with whatever idea that you get yourself involved that this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And commitment is key. Okay. Very, very key to be able to, when, when you are committed, look, uh, uh, I, sometimes I teach people, I tell them, look, there's something we call TC3. Uh, T time, TC. TC3. Yeah, okay. TC3. Okay. Time, mm -hmm. uh, uh, confidence, mm -hmm. uh, uh, commitment, courage. TC3. Yes. Time, commitment, courage. Yes. Okay. So when you have the time, you are, when you take the time to develop your idea and you are confident about the idea and you are committed to it, cash will follow you. Time, so commitment. So you take time mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, to develop the idea. You, you, you have confidence in it. You are committed to that course. Cash flow will come. Mm -hmm. so, I like the equals to cash. <laughs> yes. Because people put the cash first. And they forget that they have to put in some time. Some they time. have to be confident and yes, they have to, to be committed. Be committed. Okay. So when you take the time to build and develop the idea, develop the products, and you are confident about the product. Look, somebody wake you up from bed, you can pitch in 30 seconds okay. about the products, and you are so much committed that, look, I'll make this thing work. Cash will follow. Wow. So uh, cash flow, uh, money, if you put money first, you will never become an entrepreneur. If you put money first, you never become an entrepreneur. Quote by Franklin Ofusu. Ousu. Ousu. Kakari. Uh, Kakari. I mean, and he is the business development manager for NEIP. I mean, I didn't say. Yes, money is not the first thing to consider. Money is not the first thing. Okay, we have Holali Dogbe, Mama Dogbe, who says that I'm an entrepreneur into production and supply of 
detergents and disinfectants. Yeah. Holani, do you have a question for um, Franklin? Let's let's hear you. Okay, let's hear if you have a question for them. And then Ame, Ame, how is it? Good to see you this evening. Ame is saying that Fidel, oh, you 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 call Fidel, Fidelia to come. I hope Fidelia Sian comes and or she's she's online presently. And um um Holadi, you are, you are watching us from Spintex. Thanks for watching us from Spintex, Holadi. Hi, Holadi. It's good to see you. Okay. So then, um, 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 we're coming back to you, um, uh, Franklin. Franklin, I, I, um, uh, people online, they are okay. simply phenomenal. And um, you, we have looked at the, at the um, we've looked at persistence and we've realized that TC3 um, three. Three is very important. Yeah. Um, and we know that if we, we, we stick to it, we'll get the needed um, 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 outcomes that yeah. we are looking at. So we have done that. Does it, do we need to look for information? Is information important? In our part of the world today, mm -hmm. if you are not informed, you'll be deformed. If you are not what? Informed, you'll, you'll be deformed. Be if you are not informed, if Franklin is giving us quotes this evening, you'll be informed. You'll be deformed. Deformed. Yeah. Wow. If you are not informed, you'll be deformed. And I would add disinformed as well, if yeah. there's a word like that. Go. <laughs> information is critical. For me today, mm -hmm. information is like looking for money. Okay. It's part of, if you're looking for cash, look for information as well. Okay. But probably that information can change everything. Okay. So a lot of things are happening in mm -hmm. the country. And I tell the young people that, let's look out for the information. Sometimes we, we, we allow preconceived ideas to, be able to block the opportunities that we are supposed to seek after. Okay. Oh, yes, nobody looks at you. So the person says there, then looking for Goro boys to go and do their license. I tell you, within 30 minutes, you're out of there. Yes, you go there right now, and things are different. So let's explore. Let's, look, take courage move to any IP office, move to GEA office, move to any government agency. And maybe probably you were thinking that, oh, when I go there, nobody will attend to you. Things are changing. So seek information. And information is important. And there's a lot of information today, even with any IP. You know, people do not know that you could even have the national service for yourself. But the information is that people are not aware that, oh. Okay, so what do you mean by having the national service for yourself? Please, please okay, so break it down. I, I graduated from the University of Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. Whilst in school, I have fantastic idea. I'm able to develop prototype and test run it. And I said, no, I'm ready to run this business. But here I am. I have finished school. They will post me to Kasajani to go and be selling cocoa to some people. <laughs> and the whole idea, abandoned it for one year. We said, no, if you have such an idea, uh, write to NEIP, who let the National Service people post you to your own company. Then you can work for yourself, whilst government pay you your National Service monthly allowance. So it would be like I've been posted to any blue chip company, yes, and they'll give me company. my morning, my, 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 my monthly allowance, yes. but then I'll be working on my prototype. On, on your prototype. And how long does this process take? For a whole year. For the whole year. So of then you have a whole year that you are getting funding. Funding. In a sense. Yes. To yeah. run your company. Your own company. And during that period, we don't leave you. Okay. We, we, we give you occasional training and prepare. We want to make sure that after, between that, that one year period, mm -hmm. you can be ready for work when the service period is over. Fantastic. Fantastic. So after the one year service, now we see that you are ready to go, then... We give you the funding ranging from the 10,000 Ghana cities to the 100,000 Ghana cities, depending on your oh, level you of haven't said about that one. Though. Let's go for a break. <laughs> when we come back, we'll drill down, down into it. Because I didn't know that. I just, I just had funding. We've just, just, just been talking about funding, yeah. funding. I didn't think about asking you. So now I would ask, how much funding is there? I think we like that. Please call a friend who is an entrepreneur and tell the person that, Charlie, it's happening live here with NEIP. And don't think that this is the only one. We are having at least six series of this. So you will learn more and we're able to, to take advantage yeah. of the programs that NEIP has for us. Don't go anywhere. We are, work, we are going to on the Game Changer break with Jojo Okran. We'll be right back. Over the holidays, my friend Jake called to tell me about his amazing Christmas. He had visited a resort for a few days and couldn't stop talking about it. The guy was in love with the gorgeous views, the rare wildlife, and the scrumptious meals at the resort. 
I was insanely jealous, but when he told me the price tag for these luxuries, my envy evaporated. This exclusive experience had cost Jake $3,000 per night. Want to know the best part? The resort wasn't even finished. Many of the best features, like a man-made canal and a canopy walkway, were still under construction. Today, our game changer is just ship it. Question. If a resort under construction could fully satisfy Jake's need for a fun getaway, why do we constantly delay our creations under the guise of perfecting them? But keep in mind, I'm not talking about releasing subpar work. Let's go back to Jake's experience. Did he sound dissatisfied? Far from it. For him, he happily paid for the weekend of a lifetime. The vision for the resort didn't need to be fully realized for it to meet Jake's needs. There's a thin line between getting things perfect and procrastinating, but unfortunately, most of us find ourselves on the latter side. So how can Jake's experience help us to launch our products at the right time? Step one, identify the core need you're solving. Step two, know when your product is good enough to solve the problem. And step three, ship it and use the feedback to iterate. This week, Stop holding back your ideas because you're afraid of how people will react. Let go and let God. Just ship it. This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okran. Have a phenomenal week. Welcome back. And today we are hanging out with, with Franklin. Franklin is the business director for NEIP. And this, as you know, is about entrepreneurship and innovation. And we've looked at um, some qualities of um, entrepreneurs. So we went on a game changer and I just was just, um, Franklin was really looking at the thing and telling me some stuff. So Franklin, what were your impressions about the game, the game changer for today? About just uh, it's, it's amazing. You know, uh, the guy was able to afford, you know, $3,000 per night. That, that would be incredible to have that kind of feeling. Yeah. It's because he has worked for it. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. He, telling the other guy, he was like, wow, $3,000. And uh, even where he went, uh, the place was not even fully completed. But uh, Jojo or the guy got the satisfaction that he was getting from now, you could see that you don't have to wait for everything to be perfect before you take a step. Before you take a step. Yes. That's an entrepreneur. Yes. Risk taking. It's, yes. Many uh, entrepreneurs are waiting until all the clouds are cleared before they move. <laughs> that will never happen. For you to get all the clouds cleared before it's you move, it will never happen. So even in the midst of it, get the courage to take the risk and launch out. I think that's where he said that um, ship it out and then get feedback from your from clients the people, yes. to make it even better. That is it. Yeah. So you yeah. have ideas, you know, sit, you are sitting down, you are thinking, hmm, this thing, let me do this, uh, let me do it before I can get it to the market. Look, roll out, get a carry, ship it out and uh, don't procrastinate. Now you are 25. By the time you realize you are getting to your 50, you know, one of, uh, one of the, my first book I wrote, mm -hmm. uh, the title was uh, What I Wish I Knew Before Retirement. Okay. And I said that you must be handsome or beautiful in your 20s. <laughs> you must be strong at 30, okay. rich at 40. If after 50 years you don't succeed, forget, but it will be slow. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there, there's some level of truth. So don't wait because risk taking is one of the uh, key attributes of, of entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. And, but if you wait till you are too old, when you're taking the risk, you are very much concerned. You take it very slowly because if you don't take it, you have cardiac arrest. <laughs> your, your retirement package may go down the drain. That's why for the young people, this is the time to fail. Okay? You can fail one, two, three. I can tell you, I have, I have failed. I've lost a lot of money before. Really? What yes. were you doing? You know, my colleagues, after... University, after my national service, we went to pitch all gingered up. We won our first business plan competition in 2008. And that was 20,000 Ghana in 2008 was quite mm. a lot of money. And here, um, three graduates and two still students, uh, two ladies, three gentlemen. Our idea was to teach the people of Swami Magazine how to use uh, IT to detect the fault of vehicle. We call it okay. auto diagnostics. Yeah. At that time, it wasn't common. Yeah. So... Uh, we got there, we were able to set our office, everything was working well. And um, 
we are really making something good. And the people said, oh, you have taught us this thing, but we need computers. It wasn't part of the business model. Okay. So we said, oh, uh, then we, we have a management team, young people. We started importing laptops and desktop computers. Then we were giving to the people lay away uh, on credit basis. That crushed our business. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And five young boys and three ladies, we put our hands on our head. We lost <laughs> our business right now. So we parted ways. But I can still say all the team members, everybody is still running their own stuff. And yeah. then we went in again. I know I, I have been with the television company. We raised the first private television company in Kumasi. And wow. we, were, we were competing. At that time, this uh, 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 multi-TV had come fresh. We were competing fiercely with them. And when everything was going well, the CEO, uh, I, I was that time the general manager as a team. The guy, we went to field work. We came someday. There was a Range Rover parked at the office. He said, we're from this car. He said, oh, guys, business is going well. I bought a Range Rover. You kill the chicken that lays the golden egg. Why are you going to get the eggs again? So is that something that a young entrepreneur should yes. not do? It shouldn't do. Why? Why you, you, you put your entire capital mm -hmm. that you are running the business with. Mm -hmm. You see, the business should be able to get to a point that the business can be able to finance itself. Okay. But we are in the teething stage of the growth. Okay. And you could buy a vehicle, but get to a level that you can afford the Range Rover. When the Range Rover came, now we couldn't pay our satellite bills. Okay. So the business gradually started running to a halt, and that led to the demise of uh, the a television very company. Very lovely yeah. business. Okay. So, so young entrepreneurs, please, when you start doing the business, the money for the business is not, not yeah. your money. It's not your money. The money is used to be used to run the organization. When you get your money, which is your salary, yeah. that's what you use to do all your. Um, Shakara, it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a word like that. Right. So, um, 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 Franklin, I know you prepared uh, uh, this thing for, for, for the listeners today yeah. and for our viewers as well. So, can we go through the test? Because okay. we want to find out are you really prepared to be an entrepreneur? So, let's, let's, let's go through the Franklin test. Yeah. So, we want to test whether you have the qualities mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, in your home, get your pen and notepad. And uh, once you get it, we have, and as uh, our team are putting it on the screen, uh, we have the, uh, you rate yourself on a yeah. scale of one to five. Okay. One being very poor, two being poor, three good, uh, four very good, and five excellent. Okay. So you pick every uh, entrepreneurial behavior. Then you rate yourself that uh, when it comes to opportunity seeking and initiative, how good am I? Am I very poor at uh, seeking opportunities? There are some people who sit there. All oh, the things that are happening, they are only looking for some job to do. Are you good at seeking opportunity? Are you good at when you even seek the opportunity, do you take initiatives? If you are probably you agree with yourself, mm, for me, I think I am in between. I'll be number three. I am good, but I'm not excellent. So rate yourself with this kind of uh, entrepreneurial behavior. And the number two, so when you reach yourself, when you finish, you send it to us. Okay. We want to see how best we can help. So in order to make it quite fast, we've actually put a Google Form um, um, link in the feed. So just click the Google Form and you'll have the, the, um, this thing. This is basically uh, forward slash SV Hangout. Yes. Bitly forward slash SV Hangout. So it's in the, it's in the link. Just click it and then you see. So let's go to number two. Number so two. number two is persistence that I talked about. Okay. So, so how persistent are you? There are people who give up easily. Mm -hmm. You know, when most people tend to abandon an activity. Uh, so those people, you even let me even come to the common trade. He tries out selling wache. And the next time you see the person, oh, he's doing uh, selling uh, Broniwewu. Because... <laughs> They are not persistent Persist. enough. Okay. When, when you always abandon activity. Okay. So su successful entrepreneurs stick with it and pursue till they succeed. Okay. Right. We, we, have, uh, we have done our choose. Yeah, you go to number three quickly. So number three is commitment. How committed are you when it comes to ventures? Entrepreneurs keep their promises no matter how great their personal sacrifice. So how well are you committed to the thing you want to do? Are you very poor? Are you... Uh, poor, are you good? 
Are you very good or you are excellent? If you're excellent, take it. When you finish, you will grade it. We'll see uh, your level of... Uh, some people, when you finish, you, you call them that these people are uh, good entrepreneurs. Let's go to number four. So number four, we look at demand for efficiency and quality. How do you demand efficiency and quality? Entrepreneurs try to do something better, faster or cheaper. So rate yourself through that. How well are you good at demanding efficiency and quality? We can go to number five. Number five is taking calculated risk. Taking calculated risk is one of the primary concepts in entrepreneurship, okay? So don't just take the risk. No risk taking is a quality of an entrepreneur. Take calculated risk. How well do you do that? Are you good? Are you poor? Are you very good? Are you excellent? Let's see how you do that. Rate yourself through that. Number six, goal setting. This is mm, key. Yeah. This is the most important competency because none of the rest will function without it. None of the rest will function without it. So how well are you able to set goals mm -hmm. for yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you very poor? Are you very good? Are you excellent? Are you good? So rate yourself through that. And let's see, because this is very relevant to the success of your business. Number seven. Number seven uh, is information seeking. And we've talked about it, that if you are not informed, you'll be deformed. <laughs> Entrepreneurs yes. regularly research for information regarding their market, their client, their supply, their technology, their opportunities. They research around it. So how good are you about seeking even information on funding and all that? Rate yourself. Number eight talks about systematic planning and monitoring. And we'll be delving deeply into this when we are talking about building systems. Okay. So systematic behavior means acting in a logical way. Okay. Planning is deciding what to do, and monitoring means checking. Hmm. If you don't have this as an entrepreneur, your entrepreneurs will kill, your uh, employ, employees will kill you. Mm. So you need to be able to know systematic planning and monitoring. Number nine, persuasion and networking. Okay. This is very key. This attribute is very key because for somebody to invest in your idea, for somebody to even purchase your product or service, yeah. they need persuasion. Okay. But it goes with networking. Who knows you? And who knows the person who knows you? And that's how the rippling effect comes. So I know Auntie Comfort, I introduced my product. She also goes into her network. Oh, I've tasted this product. It's mm. really good. Yeah. And that's how you push. So that's how we influence. The last one is self-confidence. And I talk about this in the TC3. <laughs> if you, are, you don't have confidence and you are not courageous enough, you mm -hmm. cannot compete. Yeah. Entrepreneurs have quiet assurance in their capability or potential. So these are the keys you need to rate yourself one to five. And when you do it, you fill the Google form that mm -hmm. will, uh, the link has been provided. You send it to us. We'll look at next week. We'll give the results and see how many people tender it in and how uh, they are looking. Are we getting any prizes? Yes. So I have uh, some postcards here. Okay. But the bigger prize will come that the person who will go through this program with us throughout the last end, we have a, a slot for you to be given funding from NEIP. Hey. And that one, your person. So be ready. It's a, it's, it's a prize for 10,000 Ghana cities. Okay. Um, guys, <laughs> I think the thing got even more interesting. Therefore, if you are there, you are listening and you have a friend who's an entrepreneur, or you yourself, but yeah. don't, I mean, even if you are you're the entrepreneur, please call someone else. Um, you know, in Springboard, we always have a prize for you, some wow moment. And yeah. NEIP has just promised us that when we finish the series, if you go through with us, because we would, we would, we would always have some, some um, test or something, at yeah. the end of it, someone stands to get uh, an award of 10,000 10, Ghana cities. Yeah to roll out into your business. Yeah. I'm sure you or a friend of yours can benefit from this promise. This is yeah. to you. You have your, your innovation. Please be part of this. All our friends from CORE, from Springboard over the years, please, let's jump on this and let's work hard together with the NBIP. Talking about funding, before we went on the break, you're talking yeah. about the, the, if the person is able to go through yeah. the NEIP program, <clears throat> The funding at the end, the person gets funding between ten and what? What, what were you saying? That's please? ten thousand Ghana cities to a hundred thousand Ghana cities. Wow! So if in US, that's about uh, two thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars. So you get it, and 
so we have uh, certain programs that has grants component. And okay. if you come for the loan component, this one you pay back within two to three years. Okay. And we give you like a quarter moratorium. So when you get the money today, mm -hmm. you don't start paying the next month like most of the banks will do. Okay, how so long do we have? You have like four months, four average, months to yes, work with to the work funds. with them before you start your repayment. Even some sectors, we give you between six months to one year. Wow. Like those in the agriculture okay. sector. Okay. Because you need to give time for them to be able to uh, grow, harvest. Because we don't want you to use the fund that we gave you to repay back the, uh, the, the facility. Okay. We okay. want you really to see results from your business. You making some profit to pay back. So that is, that, that is how we do it. And you can pay it on monthly basis, on quarterly basis, or uh, half yearly. So um, NEIP is running a very interesting program. They are helping us grow our businesses. So the business can be at the idea stage. It can be just a fresh startup or uh, maybe it has been in business for some time. Is yes. that possible? If the, yes. the, the, the business has proven, yes. has a proven record that is, it works. So you can go there. You don't have to be uh, between the ages of 18 to 35. If, if you, are you are older than that, even 70 years, there's a program for you. Additionally, if you are able to go through the program, they have funding that can either be between 10,000 to 20, uh, to 100,000. And if, as if that is not even enough, they also have a loan component as well where you can, you don't need to start paying within the month you get it, you know, the next month you are paying, but they give you a different moratorium depending yeah, on, on the type of business and which sector you are working with. As, the, as our um, elders say, umpe we na umpe day. <laughs> you are sitting down and saying there's not opportunity. There is opportunity in the system. We just have to practice our information seeking skills and also we also have to see how we can take initiative in the things that we do to enable us um, benefit yeah. from the program that NEIP um, is, is running. Um, um, hmm. When the, when, when the thing is, is, is becoming more interesting, it's almost time for us to run away. Um, um, Frank, Albert says, well done, frankly, great stuff. That's, that's what Albert is saying to us here. Okay, so um, Franklin, is there anything that you would like to add to these things that you've, you've spoken to us? Yes, uh, in, in creating value for ourselves, mm -hmm. For me, I believe this is the time for this generation to... Our parents didn't catch that thing. Mm -hmm. But this is the time for us, the new generation, to be able to make money. You can be... I tell people that differentiate between your business and your profession. Okay. You may be a medical doctor. You may be a teacher, a lecturer. You may be a nurse. Uh, but that, prof that is your profession. What yeah. is your business? Okay. Look, my profession as a finance uh, person, mm -hmm. uh, I, I work with that in my consulting firm. But... That is a profession I've acquired, but I do a lot outside it. I, 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 my business is a juice maker. I bake as well. I, next week, um, we will not take... <laughs> yes, if, we'll by bring the way, juice. If next week we don't have hangout, please blame um, 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 Franklin, because it happens that without juice, we are not working to next week. <laughs> Additionally, to without the bread... We'll break bread because uh, we'll break bread and have some juice. So yes. we'll, we'll, we'll get some bread here. We'll get some so bread here. So how do you do it? How okay. do you separate your business from your profession? Okay. Th that, that gives you the leverage, the additional income. Look, you can be a salary earner all your life, but create a multiple streams of income. So as full-time corporate person, the time between uh, 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. the following day yeah. is 12 hours. 12 hours? Whole hours. 12 whole hours. This is the period to make the extra cash. Yeah. My consulting firm, I work from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. <laughs> so, because I have to work full time for Nana Kufuado, for, for, for the government, and in the night I have to buy time because we have another 12 hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can't sleep all the 12 hours no. and waste it away. We need to be able to look at that and be able to make extra money from it. When we get to ideation and building system, we'll talk more. Which is next week. Which is next, next week. week, we are yeah. doing ideation and build. No, no, we are not doing, are we doing ideation? Yes, we are doing building. ideation next week. Yes, but we are not doing building systems, are we? Yeah, no, we are okay, not doing so building. So next system. week, we are doing ideation. And yeah. this thing that he's talking about, separating your profession from your, your, business. your business. I have a very good friend of mine. She's a nurse. I mean, she's a midwife. She's quite high up. Uh, she's, she's finished her first degree. She's about to do her second degree. 
And she, as a side business, she supplies me foodstuffs. Yeah. And she goes all the way to the, not, to the middle part of the country to bring the things at very cheap free. So instead of me going to Abubuloshi, I sometimes buy from her. Yeah. And it's very good. I don't have to go to the market. She will supply me the things. So she's making money. And at the same time, she's working full time. Yeah. So you are there. You have 12 hours, or maybe even 8 hours, because most companies work for 8 hours. Yeah, 8 hours. So the, the rest of the um, 16 hours, or whatever. Yeah, 16. What do, you, what do you do with it? Please, create a business. Yeah. Listen to this program. Yeah. It will benefit you and your family. Franklin, any last words for us before you run away? Okay, so I have beautiful postcards here. Okay. All those who will send in their uh, assessments uh, mm -hmm. on their be uh, entrepreneurial behavior, will, you get a full pack for yourself. And I want to tell uh, my friends that, look, God has instituted business mm -hmm. in us. Okay. And one writer says that higher than the highest human thought can reach okay. is God's ideal for his children. Even some Christians even limit themselves and think a higher is okay, and that is an art of mediocrity. Okay. We need to begin to aspire higher. Okay. And don't think that Ghana is a country of despair. There is so much opportunity in this country that I am blown away when I think about it. Follow us through and we'll open up some of these things to you. Good for you being here this evening. Thank you, frankly. Thank you, thank you. I like the way that in fact you ended that indeed, please, we have lots and lots of opportunity here. And you know, you have friends who came from other countries and they are really making it because they took the opportunity, they took the initiative and they have started businesses here. What prevents you from starting your business? This is my call to you. This is my, 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 my shout out to you. Hangouts, we want you to prosper. So please be part of this journey from today and till we finish this series, we'll do entrepreneurship like you've never done it before. And at the end of it, we'll be very proud to say that X number of people went to NIEP. And some of them didn't even go, but they took the, the, yeah. the, 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 the keys that we handed out of this place. And they started their own businesses. It has been a privilege coming your way this week. On Sunday, we are hosting the award-winning Gospel, not just gospel, I'm sorry, Artist of the Year, VGMA Artist of the Year, the great Diana Hamilton, who sang Adum, and many, um, Adetro, you salute you, Monio, all those songs. She is going to be hanging, or she will be on the Springboard Virtual University with Albert Okran. You can't miss it. It was one conversation that Albert has been talking about over and over again. Please make sure you watch. And for the Springboard Hangout, definitely we'll be next. We'll be, you'll be seeing us a repeat of this program on ETV. If you've missed any point or you know somebody who missed this program, tell the person to be online or to watch ETV live on Sunday at 5 p.m. So we'll come your way next week with Entrepreneurship 101. And we're looking at ideation. Have a wonderful week. You are totally blessed.